If you're confused by the green packaging options available today, this is the series for you. In defining what is biodegradable and compostable, this is not a, just a subjective thing. So I see a lot of people labeling packaging, labeling products as biodegradable without understanding there are standards that need to be met in order to define something as biodegradable. Welcome back to the Green Cannabis Packaging Series. We're Contemple Specialty Packaging, and thanks for tuning back into the Cannabis Packaging Show. I have an exciting episode today. We're going to talk about renewable packaging, packaging made from hemp and corn and all those plastics that so many of you guys talk to us about regularly. What I want to do is, to the best of my ability, map out what are the core questions, what are the core considerations that, as I've studied this recently, have come to my mind. and begin sharing some initial findings and we'll start with biodegradable versus compostable. What's the difference? People use those terms interchangeably. All compostable packaging is biodegradable, but not all biodegradable packaging is compostable. It's like that thing from elementary school where a square is a rectangle, but a rectangle is not a square, whatever the heck that thing is. Compostable, when it breaks down, breaks down into nutrient rich plant matter. You could grow a plant and it would be healthy and there would be nutrients. There's a purpose to it. It's why people compost in their homes. Biodegradable more just means it breaks down into something. The bio part is it's being eaten by bacteria or fungus, but that's the core difference as I understand it right now. If someone has a better definition, drop it below. But these are not terms that should be used interchangeably. Each means something different, similar, but it is in fact different. In defining what is biodegradable and compostable, this is not a, just a subjective thing. So I see a lot of people labeling packaging, labeling products as biodegradable without understanding there are standards that need to be met in order to define something as biodegradable. There are three core standards that I wanna talk about right now. Can you just call anything biodegradable? Can I write on this tube here, compostable without doing research to make sure that it meets certain standards. What I mean by that is, can I get in trouble by somebody, if I'm a brand, for making a false claim? Or is it more just not a best practice? Before you call your packaging, just because it looks craft, biodegradable or compostable, make sure there's not gonna be ramifications for doing so. Three main standards that I wanna talk about. The first is a US standard, ASTM 6400. ASTM 6400 facilitated by BPI. You'll see that those words on a lot of packaging. BPI Compostable, which is basically a company, an organization, I should say, that has created a certification for what is compostable packaging. So the American standard, the US standard, ASTM 6400. The EU standard is EN 13432 also an Australian standard, which I understand is the strictest of the standards. These are three standards that quantify what is biodegradable and compostable and or compostable. Um, it's not just, I think it is, or maybe it is. There's a real standard that you have to go through before you call something biodegradable or compostable. So some examples of what is renewable packaging. Well, renewable packaging, it's coming from the earth. And the reason it's so appealing is the very thought of it just, it just makes sense. The resources come from the earth, go into packaging, and they biodegrade or degrade or compost back into the earth in rich soil to then you know, produce more packaging or more products made out of some sort of renewable resource. So that's the appeal, that's the plus side, that's the positive. So you look at um, bioresins, we call them bioresins, we don't call them bioplastics because they're not plastic. They perform like plastic, but they're not plastic. So bioresins made from hemp is the big one in the cannabis and CBD market. More and more in, in interest every day in hemp-based packaging, and it's something that we're looking at and it's something that's not currently extremely cost effective, but how is that gonna change over time? Corn-based plastics, PLA is the big one. Um, and then you have ones that are made from everything from sugar cane to rice to all sorts of things. So it's taking a renewable resource and turning it into packaging. So these are examples of renewable packaging. The next question that I want you guys to be thinking and asking yourselves is, where does this product degrade? We'll say, where does it break down? This is also another um, misconception with biodegradable or compostable packaging. It's that, well, because it's labeled as biodegradable, it's just gonna disappear. Hemp-based packaging. The reason hemp-based packaging is so appealing is because a regular plastic bottle degrades over you know, how much time? I'm sure you guys have seen the graphic versus hemp packaging and 
the water bottle in this case is gone in, I think it's 90 days. So, but in what environments does it disappear? We need to ask, I ask myself three questions, just like, again, layman terms, just speaking how I think. If I throw it on the street, will it disappear? If I throw it in a trash can, will it disappear? And if I throw it in a composting facility, will it disappear? Those are three questions that you should be asking yourself when you consider a renewable resource, a biodegradable or compostable resource. In what conditions will it biodegrade or compost? There's many of these biopolymers or sustainable solutions that only degrade or only break down in certain moisture levels or certain temperatures. And in many cases, those environments aren't even available where you're at. So the, the packaging, the infrastructure may not have caught up to the packaging, um, which is a negative in the short term. And that's purely dependent on how quickly those industrial facilities pick up speed. We're not about greenwashing. We don't greenwash at Contemple Specialty Package, we don't greenwash on the Cannabis Packaging Show, and we don't greenwash in the Green Cannabis Packaging Series. So if you really aren't about greenwashing, you have to be asking these questions because your motive and your intent is to really solve the problems. I was in the airport the other day and was at a, a it was like a Thai food restaurant and the silverware was marked as biodegradable. When I finished using it and eating it, I'm saying, I'm saying eating the food, not the silverware, I'm saying, what do I do with this? Do I throw it in the trash? Do I, you know, sure, great, it's made out of whatever. It didn't even mention what it was, but what do I do with this? Does this go in a composting bin? There was no composting bin. So what is the proper end of life? How do you dispose of this stuff? It's not just gonna disappear because it's biodegradable or compostable. That is something that we need to be paying attention to if we don't wanna greenwash. If you wanna greenwash, you're done. You just mark it as biodegradable. If you really wanna to get to the root of the problem, you have to be asking yourself, what happens to this and how do you dispose of it? The last question that's important to ask is, what does this degrade into or what does it compost into? It's not just going to go into nothing, it's going to degrade into something. So you wanna be clear on what it breaks down to. Composting is so appealing because something composts literally into something that could be used as nutrients and fertilizer for more crops to grow so that's that's composting but especially in biodegrading or degrading what is the packaging what is it degrading into it is degrading into something and you want to know is it degrading into nutrients or is it degrading into a poison that's going to be harmful to people and that could you know have other ramifications so you want to know the answer to that question as well i was reading an article that said such and such a product and i'm not going to mention it because i understand where they're coming from but we have to get better in this sense such and such a product um, is biodegradable so then I start reading the article. Okay, this is biodegradable, awesome. And then I read a little bit further and it says the part of the package is recyclable and the outer box it comes from, comes in is compostable. So you went from, this product is biodegradable in the title, the subject line, and then you start to read in and they're now talking about recyclable and compostable. So there's just a great amount of misinformation and the problem with this misinformation is that it then is going to leave the consumer completely confused as to what to do with the packaging. And, and I think my thesis as I'm learning more about this is so much of this depends on people and people knowing what to do with the packaging when they get it. And there's just so much, so much misinformation that we just got to find a way to bring more clarity in that sense. So I don't have anything else to say on that other than Let's all work on it. And if you have ideas on how we might be able to bring more clarity, I know there's people working on this stuff, but put in the comments below. Let's collaborate and talk about ideas. And that's about it. I want to, uh, we'll cap it there. I think this general point of, and you guys will see it in your own life, uh, drop it in the comments if you can, if you can relate to this where you, you're we're seeing more packaging that's green and you're seeing things that say biodegradable or compostable and you're getting them and it's like, okay, what do I, what do I do with these? How do I dispose of these? What's the proper end of life from a previous episode? If you haven't watched the previous episodes, check them out. We talk about the different types of sustainable packaging. I hope you found this valuable. I feel like people are either going to love this episode and it's going to be educational or they're going to be like, this is just totally confusing. So drop it in the notes, any further questions, and we're going to bring more experts in and, and start to talk about, you know, get to the bottom of this stuff. It might be a little messy to start, but let's hash this together. All right, guys, thanks for watching the Cannabis Packaging Show, the Green Cannabis Packaging Series. Hit us up if you have any packaging needs, contempopackaging.com. We're here to lead the cannabis industry, lead the sustainable packaging movement. But without you, nothing is possible. We'll see you next week.
Contempo Specialty Packaging has beautiful CR packaging for every cannabis product. Visit ContempoPackaging.com.